Well these are going to be the two supports for the crankshaft. I'm going to, these, this, this needs to be split in half. Um, and then they'll be, I'm going to cut these and bend them at 90 degrees. Uh, for maybe 20 millimeters down. Uh, and then there's a hole through the center. And then the crankshaft for the main mechanism will, will go through these, one at either side. These will be fitted underneath the mahogany plinth. And so I'll cut that down now on the uh, with a slitting saw. I think next um, I'll cut them in half and then I think I'll be able to use a slitting saw again to cut these two lines out uh, and then the ram section should be able to do that on the on the belt sander so I'll cut, I'll cut across there next um, I may do these two lines with a slitting saw and I may mount the vise and, and put in a milling cutter on and run along those lines I think it's going to be a bit quicker than cutting them all out on on the scroll saw save that for bits that I can't do on the mill Well, I'm thinking guys, I'm going to have enough for this brass plate left to finish the whole thing off. Once, uh, once I've got those two pieces um, cut out for the uh, drop support, that's, um, that's a big chunk out of the way. The rest of it is um, basically circles cut out for the um, piston arms so got that and a few other a few of the off cuts that I had from the uh, cross section brace that I made and so that'll give me that'll give me two circular pieces I think I've got four of these yeah there's two more there so I'm hoping fingers crossed I won't need to buy any more brass plate. I'm still waiting for that 20mm bar to arrive. So um, the chap, I bought it off eBay. The chap sent me a message saying that it was out of stock at the moment and it should come in very soon. He's asked me if I wanted a refund, but I've. Uh, well, he's asked me to let him know if I want a refund, but I've not replied to him. So I'm hoping it's still on its way. But. Uh, Got plenty to be getting on with.
if you're wondering why I've got these milling cutters passing on onto the end of the arbor, I'm on the news in this slitting saw. And uh, I must admit it whizzes through the through the brass, no trouble. It's a nice cutter as well. No, if you're wondering why I'm using I've got these uh, extra milling cutters on the end. When I bought this mill machine, it's not the biggest machine in the world, but I absolutely love using the thing. I prefer using this to the vertical mill that I've got, uh, and it's got not got a massive uh, massive travel on it. Well, it's not got a massive travel on it, I should say. Uh, I struggle sometimes when I put the dividing head because there's only half of the uh, support on the table. Uh, I should say there's. Uh, maybe 14 inches of travel on it uh, but the arbor that came with it it's an international 40 taper on the arbor the arbor that came with it I don't think is the I may be wrong but I don't think it's the um, original one to the machine and uh, it sticks out about this far um, and what I've done I've cut it in half and half of it I use in a ER40 collet with a 40 taper, international 40 taper for the machine and um, that's the original one um, plenty of spaces for bringing the cutter out to the required length uh, but uh, I've put the thing somewhere safe and I just can't find it so the reason I put these extra cutters on, I haven't got um, enough spacers uh, to put on this side of the slitting saw. And it's a one inch, one inch diameter arbor on this. All the cutters that I've got are one inch. So all I've done, I've just put extra cutters on, just to bring it out so I can get the locking screw on it. Um, the original arm. Um, has got the thread on the end for clamping it up and I've machined this down and I've just got a 16mm nut on the end so that, if you're wondering why, why guys I've got these extra cutters on the end that's the reason they're just acting as a spacer so I can tighten the uh, slitting saw up but that's, uh, let's undo this one That's those two pieces cut now guys. I've got to run down these lines, these two lines, uh, and then I think I'll do the circular piece on the end just on the belt on the uh, on the belt sander. Well guys I thought I'd show you these. I've just rediscovered these came from my dad's house when I cleared them out. They're uh, wood screws, brass, 3 8 packaged for storage not to be opened until required for use I've no idea what date these are back to Chorley with a 13 52 stroke 52 not sure what that means, but just imagine buying a packet of screws like this, guys. And when you open the box up, look how they've been packaged. There's the product details again on the on the inner leaf, and then when you open them up, and it's full of brass screws, all coated in grease. Unbelievable.
Now they are brass, but it looks as though they've, I don't know, they've been chrome plated or zinc plated. They're certainly not a brass colour. Yeah, they're certainly brass because you can see the brass coming through. slot head them, they're not a Phillips. But just imagine buying a packet of screws that are that well packaged with the grease proof paper on as well. Just unbelievable. Days when we made things proper. Well, I thought those would be ideal um, with those two supports that I've got for the crank mechanism. I've got to bend this section over now at 90 degrees. So I thought those would be ideal for drilling through and then I'll use the screws to fasten this piece on the underside of the plinth that I've made. <laughs> yeah, the good old days. Well these two pieces I've cut guys, as I just said, I've got to bend the top section over at 90 degrees to screw them onto the bottom of the base. Um, and what I've been thinking of is to make it easier, to, it's 3mm this brass, to, to bend, make it easier to bend it over. I thought I'd mount these on the shaper, use the parting blade and uh, run through maybe down half the depth and then if I put these in a vise that's going to be a lot easier to bend over to the 90 degrees now while I've still got them as a parallel piece um, it's going to make it easier to mount them in the vise if I cut these two lines out that will then make it difficult to mount in the vise so before I cut these two lines I think I'll put that in the shaper. I'll mark, I'll mark the depth out. It's probably going to be something around there. I'll mark the depth out and then um, take them down half the depth. I've got one mounted in the vice guys and I've got the parting blade in the clapper box set up position where I need it and uh, so I can get them both lined up exactly I've got uh, I've got the caliper set up Got the caliper locked down in that uh, that dimension, so I can just from when I uh, come to put this piece in, I can just take a measurement off that, so I know the the two cuts will be in the same position.
Yeah, about halfway through though. I just thought that would make it easier to bend over at 90 degrees then. I've just got some brazing flux. I've never done any brazing. Um, but I've got the brazing flux and some uh, brazing rods. So I'm thinking once I have bent that over at 90 degrees, I may put a couple of dobs of um, braze on the back side of it just to strength strengthen the thing up. But uh, let's uh, let's transfer this one across. I'm hoping that will make it easier to bend at 90 degrees. Well guys, I'm pleased to announce the arrival of a piece of brass bar.
I was a little worried there that that was going to snap. Maybe I should have heated it up to begin with, but it's got there. There's not going to be a lot of weight on the crank mechanism itself, but I may just try putting a try brazing that uh, corner up just to strength, strengthen it up. But we're getting there now, guys. Well, these crankshaft supports will fit on that way, there's two, one on either side, screw through with these holes that I've made, um, and then the crankshaft, there's got to be a hole drilled in the centre of these two, the crankshaft then will fit through both of those, and uh, then this uh, hand wheel that I made will go onto the onto the end of it. I think you get the idea there guys. So the piece of brass bar that I got I think I'm only going to use that for um, the feet and the top. I haven't got enough there to do the four legs uh, and I'm just thinking of the legs I don't need it that wide so that uh, diameter so I think I'm going to order another piece of this but maybe uh, maybe about 15 millimeters for the four legs but this will uh, this will make the the feet and maybe the the top section this will go through the uh, there'll be a small small foot at the bottom and then uh, possibly about that much of the feet to the top and then this will be fastened into the uh, wood plinth at the top well I hope you found that interesting guys as always, thanks for watching and more videos coming very soon.